بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما okay so the next thing we'll try to understand the impact of the net, on the networking design when you decided to use controls now let's take an example i got a new network set up one of my client want to set up a new network probably and maybe you have some hundreds of devices or maybe thousands of devices you want to set up as i have learned that the sdn have a lot of benefits so i decided to implement my network with sdn capabilities or maybe if you are using some existing network probably you want to upgrade to sdn now what are the things you need to consider while you are designing your network because with the help of sdn i can do automatic provisioning of your devices i don't need to go to individual device they can be automatically updated with the configurations dynamically we can change the quality of service policies or maybe security policies i can change or even you can upgrade your devices there are plenty of benefits we already discussed in the previous sections so now we need to think uh, many things we now we need to know many things or you need to plan the things in advance what are the things uh, what what exactly we require so the first thing you need to check the hardware whatever you select that must understand the controller protocols because at the end you need to make sure that your controller now this is a group of controllers now this controllers should be communicating with your networking devices now whatever the networking devices you are running they must be able to talk to each other means uh let's say i'm i'm i decided to run some kind of cisco specific controller or maybe i decided to run the vmware controller or maybe a juniper controller now whatever the controller you select according to that let's say i'm selecting a cisco so basically i'll be running some networking devices which understand an interoperable between the cisco controller along with your devices like if i'm running a cisco products in my network probably i i prefer to go with a cisco controller which makes much easier to to communicate or if you are opting for any other controller you need to make sure that these controllers are able to interact with the existing devices or maybe you are planning a new devices make sure that you are you are, you are selecting the devices which are interoperable okay so if if you if if you use a different controllers which if they are not able to operate then then it's not going to work okay so that's the first thing controllers selected hardware must understand the controller protocols now the second thing is like you must plan redundant paths or you need to path you need to sorry the next step is controllers should configure the clusters in redundancy the clusters are nothing but now if you have just one controller and what if the controller goes down then that is going to be a single point of failure and you don't want that so probably it's very important to manage you plan the clusters for redundancy where you are going to say i'm going to use multiple sdn controllers and i'm going to group them group them in the in the cluster which means it is going to behave just like a one one single big controller and with this we can provide something called failover if any one of the controller fails still you know the remaining will take care and also it will produce something called high availability so that mostly all the time the controller is available and also it will improvise the performance because when you are running multiple controllers the performance also will will be more better it improves the performance as well so we need to plan the controllers in clusters at least 2 3 in a group and the next thing is we need to plan redundant paths uh, to the controller now which means now let's say this is your controller or group of controllers now we have only one path connecting to that now what if that particular path fails then again that will be a single point of failure so we also we always need to make sure that to reach this clusters we have redundant paths now this is one path this another path you know there are multiple paths here you can see if any one of the path fails or even if multiple path fails still you have uh, alternative paths so that you can reach the controller in general 
So that is also one thing we need to consider. So always ensure that we have multiple paths to reach the controller uh, from your network. Again, as I said, if there is a single path, then that can be a single point of failure. Now, other things like if you are if you are setting up multiple geographical locations, then we have to plan the controller uh, so that all the different sites can reach the controller properly. Like if you take an example, I got multiple sites here in different locations. Now I decided to go with a controller. Now how we are going to plan? Now we are going to make yes, place one controller, maybe a set of controllers in the head office, and you're going to ensure that all the sites can reach to that particular controller. And also we need to make sure that we have redundant paths because again, if there is a single path, then single WAN connection, then that's going to be a single part of failure. Or you're going to place a separate controller in each, each side. So that this is something you have to plan. So most of the time we prefer a centralized controller to minimize the cost. But at the same time, you have to ensure that we do have a multiple paths to reach out that particular controller. That is also one thing you need to consider while designing your network with your SDN controllers. Now, one more thing, security is also important because the controller is going to be the central uh, place from where you control. Right? It is like heart of your SDN. Now, we need to make sure that we also secure it. Because typically, if this controller is not secure, now there is a possibility that the controller may be your primary target for the attackers to attack. Because from everything, all the centralized decisions will be taken from the controller. And if that particular controller fails, then it can lead to something called single point of failure. Or generally denial of service attacks where the attackers want the controller should go down or attackers or even sometimes the attackers may try to gain control over the network or over your controller and then they can manipulate uh, they can they can get access to the controller and based on that the attacker can can actually gain control over your network also so it's very important we need to plan the sdn controller so that the SDN controller should not have any unauthorized access. Okay. And even if, if someone is trying to do that, then basically there must be some kind of alerts, uh, which indicates that this and um, this unauthorized access has occurred. So probably you need to plan security. So it's a big thing, uh, probably, but securing the control is also very important. And finally, uh, training as well, because once you decided to implement the controllers, you need to make sure that your network engineer should be able to understand the behavior of this controller networks so that they can implement as well as later on they can also verify the sdn networks because they need to have a understanding good knowledge of these things then so that later on they can expertise in implementing this this specific technology so probably you need to plan specific trainings or the courses or the books resources which whatever is required for them to understand and learn and then apply that to the to the to the network 